My name is Dermot Kavanagh. I'm an artist, tutor and demonstrator. I have presented 74 How to Paint programs for the BBC called The Wash with Colour. I'm quite chuffed with that. <laughs> You've got confidence already, John. <laughs> Not that bad. <laughs> A bit of oomph. Exactly. Uh -huh. Have you the colour there for oomph? <laughs> Get hours of expert video tuition and follow every brush stroke. You can interact with a library of video tutorials which have been filmed in great detail. You will learn basic techniques as well as many fascinating tips and tricks of the trade. Learn how to sketch, paint skies, mix colours, paint trees and foliage. Give texture to rocks and brickwork. Contrast light against dark. Take the pain out of painting windows. Paint figures and lots, lots more. It's for painters of all ages and levels of ability. It is the most unique and innovative way to learn to paint today. Everyone will know what they're getting for Christmas <laughs> from now on, you know. No. My crazed imagination. If you have the interest and the desire to paint, I have the ability and the experience to teach you. Welcome to a wash with colour from Inch Strand on the Dingle Peninsula in County Kerry. This beach is four miles long and one of the most famous in Ireland. As a film location it has been immortalised in movies like Far and Away and Ryan's Daughter. Later in the programme I'll be heading down a country road with one of the all-time greats of country music, George Hamilton IV, as we compose a theme in watercolours. The intricate coastline of the Dingle Peninsula is arguably the most spectacular in Ireland. Here on the North Shore is just one beautiful sandy beach after another. Mountain ranges run the whole length of the Dingle Peninsula like a backbone. From Sleeve Mish in the east to Brandon and Mount Eagle. This little pier at Dunquin Village is the gateway to the Blasket Islands, about a mile and a half off the coast. The seven islands are still alive with the stories and culture of their inhabitants, even though the last of them left for the mainland in 1953. There are seven Blasket Islands in all. The largest, Great Blasket, has an extraordinary cultural heritage which lives on in the songs and literature created by its former inhabitants. The best known are The Island Man, 20 years ago, and The Life of Peg Sayers. Just moving on down the road and traveling like Was there always music in your family as a child, or where did the interest in music come from? My grandfather was a real hillbilly from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, and he moved down out of the mountains to work for the railroad. That's how I became a city billy instead of a sort of a hillbilly. Um, I used to sit on his knee and play with his railroad watch and he'd uh, take out those old 78 records by Jimmy Rogers, the singing brakeman, and Gene Autry and uh, Roy Acuff and the Smoky Mountain Boys. And he had a wind up uh, Victrola and he'd wind it up and put the 78s on there. And I sat on his knee and learned to love country music because of him. And what age were you then whenever you got into the music scene itself and the record industry? I started recording, believe it or not, in 1956, uh, 45 years ago this year. As those were the days when Elvis was on the scene and Buddy Holly, you know, and Gene Vincent. And I was touring around the country with those guys. And you see, once you have a colour, if it looks too dark, by adding water, you can take the colour down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another brush. Is that all right to go do yeah. that? Am I being too... No, you're fine. You're getting confident. ...too uh, bold with this? Right, George, we're just about to move on now and do this little grass bank on the far side of that shed. This is a number five brush with a mixture of Windsor yellow, a tiny bit of Windsor blue, and a little bit of light red. Come down around that pencil line there as well. Right in here? Yeah. 
because that bush there is going to be in shed over this one here. So along the top of that bush there, just keep that nice and bright. I've always imagined that the painting process is a bit like the, the music business, you know, where you're layering colour on colour. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from what I know about music, which is very little, it seems to be that there's a lot of tracks being laid down in different layers. Usually when, um, when we go in to record, we'll go in with a small number of musicians and uh, would maybe have a bass and the drums and a guitar player. And you do your vocals and uh, then come back in the next day and think what, decide what you want to add to it. As you say, lay, sort of layer it, you know, you bring in other musical colors. I'm just going to put a wash on over that entire house. Oh. So it's scary when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's going to damage it yeah. somehow. But I want you to take that brush and just more or less block in that area. Go around the windows and I'll use the number 8 then. All around them? Yeah. I'm just going to use the number 8. And how about this here? Is that, that's not going to run, is no, it? No, I'll take some of that. Okay. And you can see that these bushes here are catching sunlight on the left hand side. So I want to put some shadow here and along the walls. Get that area covered in as quickly as you can. Is that okay out yeah, there? Yeah, fill away. You see? You're it's sort of a little dingle peninsula out there. <laughs> <laughs> are you happy with it? I'm very surprised. <laughs> very pleased and uh, surprised and grateful to you because I feel like I've I've had an education today and a lot of encouragement. Well, there you are, George. I can't wait until I go to Nashville and do a few of your local scenes. Well, that would suit me fine. I'd like to take you backstage at the Grand Ole Opry and uh, show you around, introduce you to some of the hillbillies like myself. I'd look forward <laughs> to that. We could maybe paint the Grand Ole Opry. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> George, all you've left to do now is sign it. Okie doke. So down here on the right-hand side. All righty. The fourth. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Father of the fifth. <laughs> Grandfather of the six. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. George, it has been a pleasure. Well, as we say in Tennessee, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> My guest today is an accomplished writer, actress, comedian, and the woman behind Mrs. Doyle, Craggy Island's parochial housekeeper from hell, Polly McGlynn. My mother and father indeed are agreed that on both sides of their families there are plenty of good storytellers and show-offs. I'm just the first to get paid for it in a professional way, I think, you know. Playing with characters and inventing, I have to say, some of the most handsome men in the world, present company excluded. Well, I wish you all the best for that and I hope it becomes a bestseller. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but what about painting? Have you ever tried that? I am terrified about the very notion of putting a paintbrush on a piece of paper or canvas. And my mother and my sister-in-law uh, paint, and they're both very good, I think, anyway. Um, and as a result, I suppose, I just thought, no, I've no, I've no talent for that, so I've never really gone near it. Kilry Harbour is either Ireland's only fjord or a drowned valley. Opinions differ, but however it came about, it's one of the most beautiful natural harbours on the Atlantic. Ten miles long and 148 feet deep in the middle, the bottom is virtually flat, which is why the Royal Navy wants it a base here. Aside from British submarines, which were based here during World War II, Kilry Harbour has had its fair share of visitors over the years. In their time, the artist Paul Henry, the writer Oscar Wilde, and the philosopher Wittgenstein all stayed in the area. I've taken Pauline to one of her favourite locations in the west of Ireland, Loch Nafui. Pauline, isn't that one of the most beautiful and most peaceful scenes you'd ever look at? It's fabulous. It's too vast, though. <laughs> How can it be done? I'm terrified now by that. Not at all, oh. Pauline. It's going to be. It's going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> it is when you say it like that. But it is so beautiful. Where do you start? You see, is what I can't understand. Like, all right, this is here now, but like, where well, is there a rule? You know. Well, there, there are rules, you know, and there are a few simple rules. Right. But at the end of the day, we can do whatever we like within the guidelines. We're crazy. And We're like jazz. <laughs> yeah. Right. But you can see there is perspective in the sky as well, because the clouds that are closer to us are the largest clouds. Right. As they get further and further away, they look smaller. 
So we have the French over there. It sounds well. a bit like Father Ted. These are near, those are far away. You know, not big and small, isn't it? It's kind of perspective. I, I can never get a handle on that. I feel very powerful now. <laughs> so we can move on now and put in the beach while we're waiting on that there to dry. Oh, oh I like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's vibrant now. We want. That's lovely. So off oh, you go yeah. with that. All right. So how are you finding it so far? I, it's very exciting, you know, but I would be terrified to be alone doing it. I, I think I'd need the help of an adult. <laughs> and that's you. I'll stay with <laughs> for you, today, Pauline, don't that's you worry it. I <laughs> know oh, it's it's really exciting. You know, I can see why people are addicted. You know, you're going to make your mum and your sister so jealous of this. Well, I know. So. I'd be giving advice to them. I'd say, I think you need a little bit of red and that now to warm it up. I'd be saying. <laughs> Should we put a few different colours in there? Yeah, because it's lively, isn't it? it you is know, indeed. there's been. There's burnt sienna just mixed through the remainder of that wash. Oh, all right. So I'll put a wee bit of neutral tint in there as well, just to darken it slightly. Because oh. along the water's edge... Yeah. Ooh. See, there's a oh. darker oh, there vein there, running through that. Do you want any purple in there? Do you think should we put a tiny... I love it. Maybe, maybe one little stroke right, of it. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Let's what do you think? What about that? Ah, yeah. Actually, do you see? No, you it? couldn't go wrong, could you? You know. Oh, I like that. It looks like a shadow, you know, a little yeah. bit of shadow footprints. Yeah. Oh. Footprints in the sand. Leave only your footprints behind, isn't that what they say? That's right. Oh, look, that's fantastic. Again, I think we should leave it at that now, <laughs> before, before disaster strikes. I shouldn't have had the sherry for breakfast today. <laughs> we have a bit of an audience back there. I do. <laughs> My fans are here. <laughs> They follow me everywhere. Well, they're barking mad. <laughs> yeah. He has created a lot of new phrases in Father Ted. Oh, the catchphrase, of course, following me round all the time. I'm getting kind of addicted to this now. That's good. Yeah. I'd be a calmer person if I had a lovely pursuit like this, wouldn't so I? I'll get you a set of paint brushes now. A paint yes, box. And I'll be off. You'll be oh. off into the wilds of Ireland. Everyone will know what they're getting for Christmas <laughs> from now on, you know. No. My crazed imaginings. You know, like, it's literally a stain against the sky, isn't it? Are you going to keep all those brushes? Oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sharing. That's terrible, isn't it? Have you the so, colour there for oomph? <laughs> right, the colour of oomph, oomph yes. is uh, raw sienna, light red and neutral tint. Ah, the neutral tint. Oh. It's oomph with attitude, really, isn't it? You know, Restrained Indeed. oomph. Try and miss bits of the paper as well, you know, just by taking the pressure off the brush. Yeah, do you know what we haven't done? The rope, the rope. actually, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll do that quickly. It's a beautiful green rope. and uh, It is very jolly on it. Louis green. It? So. Uh -huh. Pauline Madeline. The time has come. The time has come. There we, is the pen. We name the guilty. Excellent. That. Oh, I'm, I'll be very big headed for a few days now, I think. You know, I can paint now. <laughs> It's been a pleasure. I'm unleashed on the world now. <laughs> There'll be more from the Dingle Peninsula next time on A Voice with Colour when my guest will be television presenter John Craven. But for now, I'm off to explore more of this area's breathtaking scenery in search of other painting locations, which, let's face it, shouldn't be difficult. This is St. Joseph's Convent in Dingle home to some of the finest devotional art in the country. It was back in 1924 when one of Ireland's most famous stained glass artists, Harry Clark, produced an extraordinary set of stained glass windows for the enclosed order of Presentation Sisters at this convent. The twelve Lancet windows depict scenes from the life of Christ. The American Stained Glass Association said Clark's work was mystical, otherworldly and opulently detailed. There is nothing else like them. St. Brendan, patron saint of Kerry, planned to bring the gospel to the unknown continent to the west. In the year of 535 AD, having prepared by praying and fasting for 40 days on nearby Mount Brandon, he set sail from here with 14 other monks. Seven years later, his small boat is said to have reached America across uncharted waters.
nitrous fun. <laughs> it is great, splashing it about. <laughs> and this water you're using, I saw you get it from the lake. So it's terribly authentic. Men of the country. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose That's you would right. see some beautiful locations whenever you're doing country fair. Yeah, I mean, I'm very lucky that I work on a programme that takes me to beautiful countryside every week, but you know, I've never, ever thought about painting it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've stood there on many occasions just glorying in the view because in my job, quite a lot of the time, you just have to hang about you know, while yeah. the, the cameraman's doing his work. Yeah. Right, I'm mixing up Windsor yellow, tiny bit of Windsor blue, and we're going to start and feed a lot of green into that. Like I'm being very, very bold there. Right. So we do the foreground now then, don't we? Yeah. And we have to be careful here whenever we're putting in the foreground that we cut around the rocks because those rocks have definite shapes and if we lose the shape of the rock, we lose the right. impact. So we can't just do some washes across here. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now you see whenever you look down there, there's a lot of different colours of green in the distance. Yeah, yeah. Just very quickly with it, this second colour of uh, Windsor yellow with more Windsor blue this time and a tiny bit of light red. I'm just going to brush across like that. Now keep pulling them horizontal yeah. until you get to the rock right. itself. I never ever had any aspirations towards art, you know. Never. I mean, I, I didn't even think about it at school, really. <laughs> I couldn't even draw matchstick men well, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm that sort of artist. Mind you, I did once meet L.S. Lowry. Did you? Uh, yeah. When I, I first started on TV, when I was about 15, I was on a, a kind of youth club of the air programme, and uh, L.S. Lowry was on as a guest. And he was telling us that he never th ever thought of painting until one day, I think he worked in Manchester in an on office or something, and he missed the train. And he was standing uh, on the platform which looked down over this valley near Salford or somewhere. And he saw all these little people scurrying around. Mm -hmm. And he thought, well, I've missed the train now. I won't go into work. I'll go home and paint this. <laughs> and that, that, that was his first ever painting, apparently. There you are. I just was inspired yeah. by yeah. what he saw. Yeah. That's a rock. Oh, that's, that's a rock, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll just guide you with that. So it's, uh, it's all around here that it's... Yeah, dark. just filling in that block there. But yeah. at that's the same time... That's where the waterfall goes down there, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. If you turn the brush the other way and put it across the bottom in a horizontal stroke, there's a definite darkness yeah. along the bottom. Along, along the put bottom. Put that along yeah, there yeah, as well. Yeah. Perfect. It pays sometimes to have a glass or two of whiskey before you start. <laughs> Give you oh, those. yeah. <laughs> I'll That's take strong. it up. Then. Just a, a bit of a shake in the hand there. It's hard to beat. What about these little bits of white that we haven't uh, filled in yet on yeah. the paper? Well, you know, those were left by accident, but whenever you look at a scene like that, you expect to see sheep. In fact, look. Oh, they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Almost exactly where we've left the bit. <laughs> yeah. You see, the rocks are actually lighter than the water, so we're going to have to be very careful that we retain that white. Do you know, that looks lovely the way it is, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Doesn't it? This is such a quiet place, isn't it? I can't get over how quiet it is because, you know, I, I'm around the countryside all the time and it's a, an, an illusion to think that the countryside is a quiet place. It's a very noisy place yeah. often and often quite an industrial place, but here it's so silent, isn't it? Yeah. We've got a lot of light change going on at the moment and we've got sunshine and then then it's shady and, and the rocks keep changing colour. They do indeed. <laughs> As the sunlight hits the face of the rock, it turns very, very light yeah. and the shadowed side gets pretty dark. So again, I'm going to cut down around there. It's nice to keep that dark side along the top yeah. of the next rock because yeah. then it's going to give you a lot of contrast between one and the other. You can blend that slightly and just touch the edges. Just to soften it. Yeah, you see the way it's getting rid of that yeah. hairiness, the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I'd, I'd never appreciated just how, how important it is to, to, to do the layering. In order to get that to happen, the bottom wash must be wet when the second wash goes on. Goes on. So but the second wash of... must be slightly thicker in texture. Less water in the second wash, otherwise it actually cleans the first wash away. You've got to keep standing back a bit from these, haven't you? Cause, because it is a sort of impressionistic yeah. painting. You've got, you've got to, you really see the effect of it when you stand back, you don't do. you? It all comes together whenever you stand back. Yeah. You know, yeah. The ideal distance to view any watercolour painting is about nine feet. Sometimes oh. there's paintings that I do, John, and the best place to view them from is about nine miles. <laughs> <laughs> With the door closed. <laughs> Connemara has a vibrant maritime heritage, stretching back for hundreds of years. And the past is alive and well. These traditional fishing boats, called hookers, are still in daily use.
brownstone nestling on the western edge of Bertraboy Bay was built in the 1820s by the Scottish engineer Alexander Nimmo. Rising above the harbour, the village consists of a single main street of tall houses, shops, pubs and restaurants. My guest today is a man who knows this coastline well, and indeed every square inch of water in and around Ireland. Writer, broadcaster and voyager, Dick Warner. Well, I can't think of a better place to meet Dick than a bar in Roundstone. Yeah, and this is the nearest bar to the harbour, and last time I was here I arrived by boat, so obviously it's the first place I came to. <laughs> well, I know you're no stranger to this area, Dick. You've worked quite a lot around here, so tell me a bit about the projects that you've worked on. Well, the project that brought me here by boat was a television series going in a sailing boat all the way round the coast of Ireland, total sailing navigation in 18 programmes called Voyage. This exercise is a nautical nightmare, but a scenic dream. We're heading straight for the 12 bends. It's like sailing through a Paul Henry painting. Connemara is a very peaceful place. Out here on the back roads, the loudest thing you'll hear is the odd cuckoo. appreciate the sense of space and isolation, which is one of the real attractions of Connemara. I'll load the other brush for you. Thank you. The choreography is very good. Yes, we're working like a team here. Does the speed at which the paint dries vary according to how much water you put with it? It does indeed. It also varies depending on what type of day it is. Keep that more to the left hand side. Said. If you have a damp air, the paint is going to dry a lot slower. If you have a nice warm sunny day and a dry air, it's going to dry a lot quicker. So it's got grab rails along the top of the wheelhouse here, right? something like this. I often wondered what those were, Dick. You know, I just thought there was decoration on the top. Okay. But Can you imagine if you're trying to move up that side deck and the boat's rolling like that? You need something to hold on to. So they're, they're just little handholds. What's that thing there now? It's like a pulley for putting up nets or something? Yeah, it's, it's either a pot hauler or a net hauler. If this boat was being used for lobster potting, it would be, it hauls up a string of pots. It's a winch, basically. Yeah. I think we're very nearly finished here, aren't we? Yeah, well, you see, it is possible, Dick, to overcook it. You know, and I think it's just, it pleases me the way it is. If it pleases you, I'm happy enough. I like that. Yeah, I think we should say, done. Fair enough. Well, that's Roundstone Pier. And nowhere is it more apparent than here at Sleeve League, Europe's highest sea cliff. And below me is the giant's table and chair, where they say you used to come for high tea. And this could well be the steepest speech, or so my granny said, she came from here. Now when I was a child, I used to love counting the steps on the way down to the sand. I think there were about 120, but I'll tell you what, I'll just check.
No, it was 150. But then I forgot I used to make my twos upside down. All around the coast are hidden coves and beaches, as important for fishing as they were for smuggling in days gone by. And here at Taylan, they had not just one, but two Coast Guard stations, keeping an eye on all that seafaring traffic. To be sure, to be sure. And one man who knows all about the seafaring life is ex-Navy chaplain turned artist Kenneth King. I've had a look at the paintings in your gallery and the feeling of the sea is just oozing out of them. Now I suppose it must help to be at sea for a long time to get that feeling. It really gets under the skin. It's my sole motivation as an artist. Just, I'm driven to paint. If I'm, if I'm away on holidays, if I'm out of the studio or whatever for more than a few days, I get itchy feet. I want to get back. And the light is always changing. Has it some, I often wonder, has it something to do with the Atlantic? Tremendous drama. Tremendous sea sculpture. But the area around here must be perfect for you. Yeah, you, yeah I, a place I mentioned now, Glen Lock, which is uh, northeast here, it's the second Glen up from here. And um, in the 1920s, that American artist, Rockwell Kent, stayed there. And he painted the coast uh, northeast of here. Uh, and there's no access by road to that place. So, you know, you really need to uh, be driven to do it. <laughs> well, what about a studio on a boat? A studio on a boat? <laughs> you want to watch the turks. <laughs> You can see why Kenneth came as a tourist and stayed to paint. The area has played host to lots of artists and still has its fair share of tourists in the summer. Ashford was built in the 13th century by the Norman de Burgo family, but it has been altered and added to many times over the centuries. The estate's 350 acres of woodland on the banks of the Corrib is the former home of the Guinness family. Today, it is the most exclusive country hotel in Ireland. If you want to get around Ashford Estate, this is the way to do it. The equestrian centre and the grounds of the castle have horses and ponies to suit everyone. And you never know, you might even get to meet the Duke. This is Cohan's Bar in Kong Village, where the famous fight scene from The Quiet Man ends with that haymaker of a punch delivered by John Wayne. In fact, the building never had a pub license at all. It was always a shop, but it's still something of a mecca for the film fans who come here. The whole town is a shrine to The Quiet Man, from film memorabilia to tours of the locations used in the film. Fifty years on, John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara are still here. John, this is it, the Danaher House. What do you think? Very, very impressive property. Lovely, lovely house. Really old traditional farmhouse and was used in the Quiet Man movie. Mm -hmm. And the only change is this porch in the front. You see, in a way, John, this is a bit like a still life. You know, because we're not going to paint the whole house. We're just mm -hmm. painting the corner here. Yeah. Well, if I get an impression, I'll be very happy. So I want you to do that on the underside you of see, that see, I, I got the impression we had, to, we had to paint every flipping leaf no. individually. <laughs> We'll be here all month. Exactly, exactly. So, again, close yeah. the paper again. Keep it up partially over the first wash so that it bleeds yeah. through that. I, my tree is growing before my very eyes, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. I have to say, I'm really pleased with this. Well, I'm delighted that you are. And thank you very much indeed. Well, well, I just hope that you've taken away some of the tips and tricks of the trade. I have. <laughs> I've learned a great deal. I mean, I really have learned a great deal. And, and, and actually, it's been, a, it's been a real confidence booster. I mean, I might, I might even take it up, you know, as a semi-serious hobby now. I feel uh, very privileged, I have to say. It's been a pleasure. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Gosh, it's just so dramatic again. I mean, <laughs> you've got to be so brave and there confident. Oh, look at that. You see what's happening, Lou? No. <laughs> <laughs> you make it so easy. Now, <laughs> right, watch this here. I want you to put a cloud there. Look. Yeah. Just let the paint come out of the brush. The paper, now that it's damp, will pull the paint from the brush. Yeah. And you see the way it bleeds through. 
think that has dried out really well, Toya. Do you not agree? I think it's fantastic. The crimson, which I was terrified of, <laughs> so subtle now. And the sienna, it's virtually disappeared. Well, that's the secret. You see, you have to put the colours on strong at the beginning, because if you don't do that, they will disappear. So now we're going to move on to this mountain. Oh, so I'm chuffed with this picture. It's looking fantastic already. We'll pull that across. You actually dilute the whole mixture rather than dilute the brush. Yes. I think if I was doing this without your expert advice next to me, I'd have put all the blue up there and then tried to water it down yes. on the paper. See if you just do that there, look. It sort of thins it out a bit. Okay. Yes. That's lovely. So you're very gentle with the brush, aren't you? If you press the brush too hard, the wash stays in the brush. Yes. It doesn't flow out of it. I'm used to my DIY yeah. at home, you see. I'm used to painting walls. <laughs> I can't get over, as it's dry, the mountain looks so far away. The perspective has come to life. And when you told me to dry, uh, draw the straight line for the water, I thought, oh, it's going to make it so flat. Yeah. But it hasn't. It's really worked. But you've done a great job. I've really enjoyed it. It's been fantastic. I think it's near time you signed it. This is where I ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's the pen, just over here in the right-hand corner. In a way, Love Jerry, it. coming down to Inish Owen for you is like coming home. It is like coming home because I feel as if I'm from here, more than Derry actually, which is probably an odd thing to say. But my mother's from here. She was born about four or five miles over, as they say, that away. So I spent a lot of my childhood down here, actually most of my childhood down here. And the people loved, they loved music and they, they loved language and they loved telling stories and they loved funny things. Well, I suppose then, having so, such close contacts with an area that had a musical culture, it wasn't such a big transition for yourself then to move into a musical career. No, it wasn't actually because music was around you all the time here. But you moved into, into the show band scene then yeah. and you became a musician yourself in a band and yeah. from there into a rock band yeah. and travelled to America. How did That's that right. all come about then? Well, you see, uh, one of the marvellous things about Derry basically when I was growing up was that, you know, you were on the brew, you were on the door. So you had nothing else to do. It was almost like, you know, the only thing you could make money out of was, uh, was music or, or football. As a normal rule of things, most people drop out of university to get involved in music. You dropped out of music to go to university. Yeah, I, I did do all the way around, <laughs> yeah. I ended up in a, a rock band in America and, and Canada. It was a fairly, let's put it this way, fairly hard way of life, yeah. you see. So after about two years or so, I, again, I was getting close to about 30 years old, you yeah. see, that kind of time. When you know you're not going to be a big star, you see, in that, in that kind of business. So I kind of looked around me and said, oh, you know, this is great crack, but you know, you can't go on. You'll die if you go on like yeah. this. So you went to university, yeah. you got your degree, mm -hmm. and then from there you moved into broadcasting of all things. How did that, what was the interest there? Well, when I got a degree, you see, I realised I was qualified for no profession whatsoever. So uh, I just kind of, I got this job as a, an editor in a community magazine. And Charlie, I I'd say you'd possibly it. agree with me that a garden like this just offers so many opportunities that it's virtually impossible to choose a painting location. What do you think of the garden yourself? It's stunning. I, I want one. <laughs> it's fabulous. <laughs> it's really lovely. And um, sort of my type of thing, the lake with all the bog plants and that, it's beautiful. Yeah. There's so many different features in the garden. Mm. You know, just as you walk around, it, it, it unfolds as you walk around it. All the reflections of happiness. Yeah. Well, that's something that we're going to be using today in the painting. And we have to make a decision, and this is it. That's the scene we're going to paint. Just look at this bank of foliage in the middle distance. That's where we're going to get our colour from. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use that as our focal point. And we'll frame it with this beautiful old tree here. Yeah, I wonder how the long it's been there. Would you say that is very old? I would say, yeah, it's a U, isn't it? And U's don't get huge, so it's probably quite old. It looks very gnarled, yeah, doesn't it? it does. And I particularly like the light branches against the dark foliage mm. in the background. But we're going to have to throw that far distance back. We're going to blue that so that right. it doesn't come forward. And the reflections. Do you think you're going to be able to handle it okay? Next time on Watch with Colour, I'll be in County Tipperary, where my guest will be television presenter Nick Knowles. Until then, it's goodbye from Connemara.